So in this question, we have a hyperbola, and the first question says write down the equations of the asymptotes. So remember that your asymptotes is this one over here and this one over here for a hyperbola. Uh, because if we draw a random little hyperbola, this moves the graph three places to the right. So that would be at x equals to three, and then this moves it two places up. And so this would be y equals to 2. Some students struggle with, is it x or y? Well, what I tell them to do is, if you follow this line, as soon as it hits the axis, what axis is that? That's the y axis. So the y is equal to 2. And if you follow this line, as soon as you hit the axis, you're hitting the x axis. So it's x equals to 3. OK, so let's just answer this for these people. So x equals to 3 and y equals to 2. Done. Write down the domain of f. So the domain of a hyperbola is always very easy. So it doesn't matter which quadrants we draw this thing in, but I'll keep it correct just for any of you who might get a bit confused. So we're going to draw it later. They are going to tell us to draw it, but for any hyperbola, the domain, okay, so remember the domain is the x values. So the domain is always going to be um, everything except this asymptote. I'll show you why now, but you can just say that x is an element of any real number, but x cannot be equal to 3. I will explain it now. And then if you prefer to use interval notation, you could say, um, or I mean, you could have said it like that, sorry, or you could say like um, x is an element from negative infinity up to 3, or from 3 up to infinity, something like that. Okay, so let me explain. Domain is the x values, right? So let's say we started over here. Now I want to see, can you make this green dot? Can you slide this green dot all the way from the left-hand side to the right-hand side without ever having to lift your pen, off the, your pen off the paper? So for example, if you slide it this way, you have to follow the graph though. Whoops, can you see we're getting stuck? How are we going to get to the other side? We can't get to the other side because there's a dotted line. This dotted line is the asymptote, and you can't get past that. So what happens is that we have to jump over, and then we carry on over here, making our way to the right-hand side. And now we have arrived. So we started here. We arrived at the other side. So we were able to do it, but along the journey, we had to jump over this dotted line. So we can say that x could have been any number because we could have gone as far that way as we wanted to, and as far that way as we wanted to. So x can be any number except for 3, because at 3 we had to jump over the dotted line. Okay? And range works exactly the same, but with range you just start at the, you just go from the top to the bottom, or bottom to top, it doesn't really matter, and then you see if you can go all the way. Okay? So we've done that one. All right, for the next question we have to determine the coordinates of the x-intercept. So remember to find an x-intercept, that's where you always make y equal to 0. So we go to the original equation and we make y equal to 0. Okay, now there's multiple ways that you could solve this, but I'm going to take this over to the um, left-hand side, like that, and then I'm going to do cross-multiplication. So that one can be multiplied there, and this x minus 3 can be multiplied onto that side. So it's going to give us 1 equals to 2, and in brackets, x minus 3. And so 1 is equal to 2x minus 6, so 2x is going to be equal to 7, and then x would be equal to 7 over 2. Now guys, you know what's really weird? I don't know if some of you have noticed this. Um, in our question papers, in the in the beginning of these question papers, they always tell us, please round answers to two decimal places. But then when they do graphs and stuff like that, and they end up with these fraction equations, um, or these fraction, these fractions, sorry, they never round it off. They just leave it as a fraction. Um, I would imagine that they would have changed these to like 3.5 or something like that, but they never do on the memos. It's so weird. Like, come on, guys, you said two decimal places for all questions, unless stated otherwise, but you didn't tell us otherwise over here. So, quite weird, eh? Quite interesting. If you've ever picked up on that, yeah, you've got a valid point. <laughs> so, um, where were we? So the x-intercept is 7 over 2, so say 7 over 2, but then also remember that you must fill in the y, and the y was 0 
at that point. Okay, the next question, find the y-intercept. Okay, so to find a y-intercept, now we make x zero. Okay, so we're going to go make x zero. And then you can just go work that out. And that's going to give you 7 over 3. So you could then say that the y-intercept, I mean, your x is 0 and the y is 7 over 3. And lastly, this is quite a nice basic question. It's like a nice entry-level um, graph question. So it says, um, draw the graph. Okay, so to draw a hyperbola, we need the asymptotes and the intercepts, all of which we have found in this um, question, so that's good. So the asymptotes, well this moves the graph 3 to the right. Remember the x is always opposite, so when it says x minus it moves it right, and when it says x plus it moves it left. Weird, hey? So that's x equals to 3. Then the y asymptote is moved two, upward, two upwards, that's not opposite, that's normal. So that's y equals to 2. Then we need, now students always say, yeah, but Kevin, uh, my teacher back in grade 10 told me that you have to look at this number to be able to see which quadrants you're in. Guys, you don't have to do that. If you just get your x-intercepts and your y-intercepts, it'll do it for you, okay? So now be careful. The x-intercept is 7 over 2, so go work out the decimal value of that because otherwise you won't know if it's bigger than 3 or smaller than 3. So the decimal value of 7 over 2 is 3.5. So that's bigger than 3. So you're going to put your dot here. You're not going to put your dot there. Okay, that's going to make everything wrong. So your dot's going to be over there, and you can fill it in as 7 over 2 and 0. Then you're going to go fill in your y-intercept. So go work out the decimal value of that, just so you can see if it's bigger than 2 or smaller than 2. But that's going to be um, 2,33 which is bigger than 2, so you're going to plot it there. And there we go, so these are the two quadrants we're in, this one and this one, because if because those are the only quadrants that will allow us to have an x-intercept there and a y-intercept there. See guys, it's very simple. So now you just go draw it, and like that, done.